with another video to take you on a walk through the UK's nature. These videos are all about getting you to take a moment to simply exist within nature and take a few minutes to think about how you can appreciate nature beyond just learning about it. Subscribe to Ferro Forest to keep learning about UK nature. Getting up close to nature is hugely beneficial to your health. All sorts of studies have shown this. I mentioned a few of them in the last video where I walked through experiencing nature with you, but there's plenty more to look at. Another one that I found was able to show that exposure to natural stimuli improved the performance of people's working memory when compared to exposure to urban stimuli. There are various reasons that have been posed as to the potential cause for this connection to nature being so important to people. One theory suggests that because our ancestors relied on the environment so heavily for survival, we have an innate drive to connect with it. A different theory suggests that spending time in nature could trigger a physiological response, which is an automatic response that our body does when exposed to a stimulus such as nature, and that this response lowers our stress level. A third theory suggests that being in nature replenishes our cognitive resources, meaning our ability to carry out different tasks, and therefore exposure to nature results in us having better concentration and a higher attention span. Some researchers suggest that a combination of these theories is at play when we gain health improvements from exposure to nature. In the last video like this one, I took you on a walk through different habitat types, but this time let's get a bit more up close and personal with some creatures in the UK. Watch as this red admiral butterfly climbs up the stalk of a stinging nettle. Look at that dazzling display of red, white and black that stands out so clearly from the surrounding greenery. Have you ever thought about what causes a butterfly's wings to have such striking colours? What is the biological mechanism behind the coloration? Why did these bold patterns evolve in the first place? Smaller forms like this butterfly are often overlooked, but taking a moment to watch them and think about them can reveal how complex these little animals really are. Butterflies have a high sensitivity to colours and are even able to see colours that we can't. They make use of these colours in a variety of ways. Have you seen any birds in the area? Maybe you spotted a lizard or a toad deep within the vegetation. We have many species in the UK that would happily snack on a butterfly. Bright and complex markings on butterflies can trick these predators into thinking they're looking at something other than a prey animal. In watching this butterfly, more thoughts may drift into your mind. Have a look at the nettle the butterfly is walking up. Have you ever touched stinging nettle? Do you recall the tingling sting that crept up your hand after doing so? The stinging nettle is also trying to avoid getting eaten by using those tiny barbs to deter animals. While not every aspect of nature is friendly to people, if you know how to look out for plants like stinging nettles and what parts to avoid, you can get as close to them as we are now without fearing injury. Did you notice anything else about the stinging nettles? Perhaps you spotted those little holes in some of the leaves. How do you think they got there? While stinging nettles may seem bothersome to us, they actually support a huge range of species in the UK. Aphids feed on their leaves and form the lower part of the food chain for many species. Ladybirds will scour the stinging nettles in search of aphids to eat. Garden birds like blue tits will pick off any ladybirds they find. Larger mammals like foxes or birds of prey like red kites will swoop in and take down the blue tit. Just this one sign that something has been feeding on one leaf of the stinging nettle can reveal to us a whole interconnected ecosystem that's making use of this plant. Perhaps, given that it's a red admiral climbing up the nettle here, these holes are remnant evidence that this very butterfly spent its caterpillar life among this plant. Stinging nettles is a favourite food source for red admiral caterpillars. Watching this butterfly lets us not only think about its past and present interactions around us, but also the future. Where will the butterfly go after this? This moment in both your lives is shared, but how long will it last for? The majority of red admirals can't survive our plummeting winter temperatures, so this individual will need to make the most of the time it has and move on soon to find a mate and leave the future of its species in the hands of its eggs. It's not always the most obvious parts of nature that are the most interesting to look closely at. Have you ever looked down at the dirt and thought about what's going on underground? Many people have seen a molehill in the ground at some point in their lives, but have you ever stopped to actually look closely at it? Have you ever waited patiently for a few minutes to see if the resident mole is close by? Watch for a moment as the molehill creation takes place before your eyes. Follow the pieces of soil as they tumble out from the centre and down the sides, raising the surface of the ground higher. 
Picture what might be happening beneath the soil. Is the tunnel below spacious or very narrow? Is the air down there humid or fresh? What does soil beneath the surface feel like? Is it soft and smooth or wet and squishy? Think about the mole creating this molehill. How long has it been down there? Moles spend almost their entire lives underground and are adapted perfectly for their environment. Have you ever seen a mole? Their front legs are shaped like large spades, scooping up the dirt, and their bodies are covered in thick silvery black fur. Living underground, the mole has poor eyesight and hearing, but makes up for it with an enhanced sense of smell and touch. What do you think the soil feels like to the mole? What do you think it can smell down there? Perhaps it can smell an earthworm or some beetle larvae, two of its favourite food sources that it can travel up to 20 metres a day searching for. Can you picture just how many tunnels must be down there? Moles use the same complex series of deep tunnels for multiple generations. The tunnels make the soil healthier by aerating it and allowing surface puddles to drain away. This in turn provides better growing conditions for many of the plants around you on the surface and so helps support all the other species that rely on those plants. If just one creature is able to influence so much, think about what all the other creatures beneath the surface might be influencing. Picture the earthworms, the ants, the wood lice, the centipedes and the spiders. How often do you stop and think about the effect these smaller animals have on the wider ecosystem? Can you picture the world from their perspective? The next time you're out on a walk, see if you can spot one of these little creatures and try to figure out its role in the area. Sometimes you might end up looking out over coastal regions. Have you ever stopped to look in a rock pool? Do you know how the rock pool formed? Sit and watch for a while as the high sea levels begin to drop, as the tide slowly drains away, and watch for the pools of water that form in the crevices between the rocks. These rock pools are tiny ecosystems in themselves, where the hardiest inhabitants of the sea survive. What do you think it's like living in a spot where the sea comes and goes, bringing in with it the forces of water, food sources and potential predators, then draining away again to expose individuals back to the air? Can you smell the salt in the air from the sea? Can you hear the gulls calling out as they circle above? Looking closely at the rock pool, what can you see? All sorts of life can be found here, such as starfish, sea scorpions, prawns, limpets and mussels. You might even be able to spot slightly larger animals, like an octopus. Can you see the hermit crabs here? We have multiple species of hermit crabs in the UK. Watch as they interact with each other, scuttling along the sand beneath the water. Are these two related, or did they just happen to end up in the same pool after the tide drained away? If you're lucky, you may watch long enough to see hermit crabs fighting over who can live in the better shell. But where did these shells come from? Hermit crabs don't make their own shells, instead making use of one from another creature. Even down here in coastal habitats, you can watch wildlife up close and gain an understanding of the complex interactions of species that occupy our world. How did you feel watching videos about our natural world? Maybe the next time you're out on a walk, you can stoop down close to the ground and take a look at the invertebrates crawling around down there. Take a moment to think about their life cycles and just what it must have taken for them to get to where they are right now. Maybe you can take a breath in and see if you can smell what flowers are in the area. There's so much more to nature than simply learning about what's in it, and taking a moment to just appreciate and be within it can really help you put into context your learning about nature, as well as improving your health. If you want to learn more about UK wildlife before you go off on your next walk, make sure to check out some of my other videos.